Man, uh, communists were are threats for Spain. Islamists are threats. Kurds are threats. Then you have a psychology of fear, which makes you more reactive rather than visionary and proactive. So there was a need of change of things. The, the solution for this is democracy. Democratization. To make everything more democratic. To make foreign policy more democratic, not elite business. To make, uh, to eliminate all threats from the mind of the people. And therefore, in early, in immediate, in two years, we uh, implemented eight democratization packages. And when the world was moving, was changing towards security and less democracy, we decided to have another direction, more freedom, more democracy, without this insecurity. Second principle was, today many people now critical analyzing this principle is zero problems with our neighbors. Zero problems with our neighbors as a slogan, as a principle. In fact, uh, for me, it was a psychological shock. Uh, and the aim when I try to use, I know history. Uh, and as a historian, I never claim that there will be zero problems with in nations, countries, even forget them between brothers and sisters, it is impossible to have zero problems. Sometimes you will have problems. But what did I try to do? I tried to show to a Turkish nation and the new generation that we are not surrounded by enemies. We, there was a new mentality and Zero problems with neighbors means you are changing this. Like when Mustafa Kemal Atatürk declared peace at home, peace at uh, peace in the world. After a war of liberation was a declaration of a, of a diplomacy of peace. Now there was a need of a declaration to all neighboring countries that we want to have good relations with anyone. And uh, last year in uh, uh, Council of Europe, when I mentioned this, uh, one Armenian colleague or parliamentarian asked a question, what about uh, our relation with Armenia? We work very hard to have good relations with Armenia and we will continue to work hard. And in my answer I said in our philosophy of uh, relations, international relations, uh, we have two categories of states. Everybody was expecting friendly states, hostile states or states with problems. I said, Friends and potential friends. That is the new philosophy of Turkish foreign policy. We do not declare any nation, any country as a hostile nation or country. In last 10 years, we improved all of relations with our uh, neighbors in a dramatic way. For example, in first five centuries, there was no even state visit from Russia to Turkey. Every day, now, every year now, Russians are coming to Turkey, Russian leaders, Putin and the Turks, our Prime Minister Erdogan, President is going, and there is no visa between Turkey and Russia. Could you imagine 30, 20 years ago, that could have been possible? Or with Greece, in one day, we signed 25 agreements last day in 2010 with Prime Minister Papandreou. In all 87 years of Turkish Greek relations, there were only 30 agreements. In one day, we signed 25 agreements. With Georgia, with Georgia today, Turks and Georgians are traveling without passport, just identity card, and Georgian airport, Batumi airport, is being used by Turkish airlines as domestic airport because going from Batum to Artvin is easier than going from Trabzon to Artvin. With Bulgaria, with, with last week, uh, we had uh, in four days, uh, five days, with Prime Minister Erdogan, we visited four countries, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and Bosnia and Herzegovina, and we made high-level strategic council meetings, joint cabinet meetings with our Azerbaijan and Ukraine. And next month, we will be having uh, high-level strategic council meetings with Russia, Greece, and uh, Egypt. Of course, we have problems with Syria, and I will tell why we have problems. It is not because of our foreign policy, it is because of a domestic uh, crisis in Syria and because of this uh, Assad regime's brutal policies against the people. We can have zero problems with those who have uh, an orientation of peace. 
but we cannot have zero problems if somebody is killing and attacking a people in living in cities by artillery and uh, uh, helicopters and planes. The third principle was more uh, proactive pol policy uh, in surrounding uh, regions like Balkans, Caucasia, Middle East, Central Asia, and Africa, North Africa. And we try to be very active, like, I, I, want, I don't want to go into details, if there are questions we can discuss, like indirect talks between Syria and uh, Israel in 2009, uh, 2008, when I was mediating between two sides, uh, like Turkish influence and po policy uh, regarding nuclear issue of Iran, like, uh, signing Tehran declaration by Prime Minister Erdogan, President Lula, and Prime Minister President Ahmadinejad, or uh, trilateral summits between Turkey, Bosnia, and Serbia, which was impossible to imagine before, uh, uh, between state level. Trilateral process between Turkey, Bosnia, Croatia, our role in Palestinian reconciliation, etc. There are many, many other examples which I can say. Turkey start, decided to be active uh, uh, player of facilitation, mediation, uh, and order uh, establishing policies, let me say, in surrounding regions. And today, if there is any crisis in Balkans, in Caucasia, uh, in Central Asia, or in uh, Middle East and North Africa, I am sure the first country which will remember uh, as, a, as a country of problem solving, that country will be Turkey. If it is a civil uh, uh, unrest in Kyrgyzstan two years ago, I went there as the first minister of foreign affairs going after the crisis, and we established, uh, we formed a national consolation platform in order to secure the safety of general elections. Or if there is a problem in uh, uh, Balkans, again, say, or in other parts. Uh, of course, our Policy with the Caucasia, for example, during the Georgian-Russian War in 2008 was saying we uh, provided a Caucasian platform of peace and tried to ease the tension. And still, we are working very hard to ease this tension between Armenia and Azerbaijan as well. We hope that one day we will achieve uh, a real peace of this multi-ethnic, multi-religious uh, uh, region. Uh, fourth principle was a balancing relation not balancing, but complementary relations between global powers. We are a member of NATO. We have a strategic partnership, now model partnership with the United States. This is uh, the basic backbone of our foreign policy and will continue to be so. And we are a uh, candidate for uh, nego uh, negotiating uh, accession uh, country with the EU. That will continue. No other relation can replace our relation with Egypt. No other relation might be more important than NATO. But we are not in Cold War. We have excellent relations with Russia, and we will have excellent relations with China. Our relation with China is improving, and we will have uh, relations with other uh, global players. Fifth principle, there will be new openings to uh, other regions, and Turkey will uh, be uh, present everywhere. And uh, like we declared 2005 as the year of Africa, 2006 as the year of Latin America. After, uh, when I became Minister of Foreign Affairs in 2009, in three years now, from 2009 until today, we opened 23 new embassies in Africa and five new, um, four new embassies in Latin America, two new embassies in East Asia. Before, Turkish foreign policy was oriented more Euro-Asian, more uh, Middle Eastern and Euro-Asian. And I declare the new era is after Euro-Asian era. And we had only 12 embassies in Africa in the last uh, 87 years of Turkish struggle. In three years, we established 23 new embassies. Just to give you an example, in Somalia today, there is only one full-fledged embassy, which is Turkish embassy. There is one 
regular flight from Mogadishu to Mogadishu and from Mogadishu, it is Turkish Airlines. Whoever wants to go to Somalia now will have to come to Istanbul first. Greet Istanbul and then go to Somalia. Uh, it was so interesting last year in Tunisia, for example, when I had a meeting uh, uh, on France of Syria. I came to Turkey. Suddenly in the airport, I saw Sudanese Minister of Foreign. I said, what are you doing here? He said, I am coming from Tunisia like you. I said, okay, most welcome, but I am going back to Khartoum. And in order to go to, from Tunisia to Khartoum, two African countries, he is coming to Istanbul and going to Khartoum because Istanbul is the best place to change the flights. Istanbul became a hub for all upper European flights. When Turkish Airlines privatized, I had a meeting with them in 2004. I said, we want to have three uh, conditions before that. One, you will fly all surrounding regions having kinship with us. Second, you will fly to certain countries more than once. For example, to Ukraine, Turkish flies, Turkish Airlines flies six cities, six different cities every day. And third, we will declare new openings to new continents, and we will fly everywhere. Wherever we open an embassy, we will fly. Uh, Twenty-three embassies in three years, of course, create a huge uh, potential for our economic development. Now, Turkish economy is, has responded to the uh, economic crisis in a much better way than others. Why? Because when we came to power, Turkish uh, exports was dependent on Europe, almost 60%. After our policy with uh, neighboring countries, Europe problems policy, we uh, uh, changed this, and our trade with uh, neighboring countries uh, was 8% in 2003, now it is around 32%. When there is a crisis in neighboring neighborhood, we change the direction to Africa. And in Africa, in the last three years, our export has been increased almost 10 times more. I can give an example in Ethiopia. In 2005, there was only one Turkish company and total Turkish investment was 50 million. Today we have 341 companies and 1.3 billion Turkish investment is in Ethiopia. Because Turkish economy, you have